Welcome to the Teacher's Circle, where mathematics and teachers meet. The Teacher's Circle brings together active mathematicians and middle school teachers. Our goal is to discover and pass along to students the excitement and richness of problem solving in deep yet accessible mathematical topics. Tonight we're going to run a bunch of exercises here to uh, sort of indicate some interesting ideas in mathematics and we're also interested not only in the mathematics but on how these methods might be used in teaching your classes for middle school, high school or whatever. What I want to do tonight is teach you a game that has a lot of mathematical richness to it. I call it the puppies and kittens game. This game is very simple. Its rules are very simple, and it's easy to learn how to play it, but it's very hard to discover how to play it well. It is a good model for teaching people what is called the theory of combinatorial games. Imagine that you have 16 puppies and 11 kittens in an animal shelter. There are two players, and the players take turns adopting the animals. The rules are very simple. When it's your turn, you have to adopt at least one animal. It can be either one or more dogs, or one or more cats, or if you're going to adopt more than one species of animal, you have to adopt equal numbers of each species. The winner of the game is the person who cleans out the shelter, in other words, who makes the last legal move. Math Circles empower students. Teacher Circles empower teachers. I was asked to say something about why I thought that teacher circles would be a really good idea. And it came about for me, I believe, because I went to quite a few student circles, uh, opportunities where students that I was teaching in seventh and eighth grade, or sometimes they would continue on through ninth grade or 10th grade, and uh, they would be talking with mathematicians at San Jose State University about ideas and topics that I w had always been interested in and they were really interested in, but neither one of us knew too much. So I would go to the circles and um, I couldn't ask questions. Adults weren't allowed to ask questions. That was an important thing, uh, the rules. That was the rules. And sometimes I was really just so anxious to know more. And of course, as, uh, as an adult there and as the children's teachers, I was also a little shy about asking questions when they, I, they might think either that I wasn't very schooled or that I was just not very smart. So I wanted that opportunity that the children had to ask the questions. I also think there are a lot of other teachers where they would really, really like to get to know some mathematicians personally. And the children had that opportunity, and I wanted that opportunity for the other teachers that I worked with on a pretty regular basis. I'm very excited about the way the Teacher's Circle has worked out because its emphasis on problem solving has been really central. It's made us um, maybe not so shy, maybe not so reluctant to show that we're not smart, but a little more fearless in the way we approach things. And I think that teachers need to have that, especially when they want to explore ideas and discover things with their students. The aim is to equip educators with an effective problem-solving approach to teaching mathematics. I started a class at my school for gifted 6th, 7th, and 8th graders because of this program. Some of the mathematicians who run this program have come to my school and actually taught my kids. It's been great for me professionally to develop my skills and my confidence in problem solving and that it's okay not to have the answer. My kids love it when I don't know the answer and they can get it first. That's been really fun. Our main focus has been on problem solving and with that I can trick my sixth grade students into using basic math computational skills to solve these problems and they don't feel they are doing math because they really want to solve the problems. I'm a general studies teacher and also teach middle school math, but I wasn't a math major. I had the opportunity to experience first-hand problem solving that gave me a greater understanding of what it's like for students who approach problems in areas where they really have no prior experience. Time is devoted to discovery, problem solving, and interactive learning.
feel strongly that teacher education is a crucial mission and that first-rate mathematicians need to be involved in it. It seemed to me that that's what was happening here at the teacher circle. I wanted to see how it all worked. I'm really excited that there is a place where mathematicians and math teachers can meet in order to learn more about problem solving. I take small parts of what we've done back into the classroom and expand them into the California standards and how I teach. We consider the game of crisscross. Now the way crisscross works is we start with a square board that's four dots in each corner and a certain number of other dots go in the middle, say six more dots sprinkled around. Now to play the game of crisscross, all you need is two players and two pencils one red, one green segment. And the first player is going to connect any two dots with a red segment. The other player is going to connect any two dots with a green segment as long as the green segment doesn't cross that red segment. And the first player goes and they alternate turns connecting two dots with a segment of their color as long as they don't cross any of the existing segments. And the question is, how do you win at crisscross? Why did I choose the puppies and kittens problem? There are a million problems that you can pick. The trick is to find a problem that's entertaining, that's fun to investigate, and that's open-ended. You never want to leave the students completely satisfied. You want them to have fun, to discover things and be proud of what they discover, but the problem should have some other dimensions to it. This problem can lead in a lot of different directions, so it has entertainment value, investigation value, and it has mathematical richness. What do you want teachers to know about mathematics? Well, I think they should know it's fun, that doing mathematics is a fun thing. Uh, people like to solve problems, it's just a natural human endeavor, and if you think about mathematics as problem, solving problems, um, working puzzles, uh, playing with things, and think of it as that kind of activity, then it's, it's really enjoyable, and that was one of the things we definitely saw this summer with the, the teachers working away, was just how much they enjoyed it.